Really, 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 really excited to be here. Um, I'm speaking English, but I can, je peux parler en français. When there's questions or later, there's going to be times where you can speak. I can hear you in French, but English is the language of commerce. And I know we've been talking about commerce all day today. It's actually, if you look at the history of both languages, the French could have learned a lot about you know, language from capitalism. Regardless, I'm going to speak English. It's the most famous language. I'm the most famous new media artist. I also believe you're all famous. Um, and you're hopefully today going to be famous for making me rich. We're also going to make a new artwork together. Um, it's going to be really exciting. Maybe we won't make any money, maybe we will, I don't know. But when you think about artists, you think about culture, right? I mean, you know, you, you have this romantic idea of the artist. The artist looks something like this to you in your head. Maybe this, I'm, this is actually non-gendered. It's just that it's so progressive that uh, it's, a, it's a woman with a beard. Anyway, you think of this sort of, you know, fantastic image of a painter just spending their days maybe in a field uh, painting the sunset as it goes over, uh, you know, some haystacks or something. But, you know, the, and, and that's culture. You know, the artists produce amazing things. They change the world. People like me, people like most of you in the audience. But the reality, this is my little sticky, my sticky note, the reality is closer to this, actually. The reality is, a, you know, most artists uh, in most culture is being sort of uh, cut back. So there's 50% you know, cutbacks across Europe. Most artists are really a, a little girl in rags. Uh, the average artist makes less than $10,000 a year. And by the way, in case you're thinking, oh, that's maybe only in the United States, uh, where we know artists are treated terribly. In Canada, that's the uh, actual average salary where we have uh, just doubled our arts funding. So it's something to think about uh, as we talk about the art market. Who is getting expropriated, I guess? <laughs> anyway, so meanwhile, there's another culture that's doing really, really well, it seems like. It's this culture we hear about all the time, and you know, mayors are trying to attract this culture to their cities to make them great. Oh, we'll make the next Paris if only we could be more like San Francisco, right? If only we could attract startup culture. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't, what a world we'd live in. Le limousines would take us to work. Our lunches would be catered. It's the fantasy that we already have of an artist. It exists today in San Francisco. Just go, check it out. It's amazing. Last year alone, startups raised $65 billion for absolutely nothing. They haven't, they haven't made it. They, it's just come straight into their, and so I'd like a piece of that. I know you would too, and I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna do it. So, that, it might, you might think these people are pretty smart, right? You know, these startups, they, they must, they're the geniuses, right? They came from Stanford. My experience, though, I've worked in startups for almost 10 years, is it's closer to uh, uh, three boys in a, in a bouncy castle like this. And unfortunately, um, I've witnessed firsthand, it's sometimes a little bit closer to this. Uh, unfortunately, it's a lot of men with, uh, well, this is, I mean, I know this is offensive, but I found it within a, it's clip art in any way. Anyway, it's more, there's a lot of misogyny, racism, right? We just saw Peter Thiel raise, uh, like, what is it, 1.5, $2 million for Trump. Um, and anyway, it's just the beginning. There are a lot of secret misogynists uh, in startup world. And so I'm, a, I'm an artist, I'm empathetic. Why do these guys get all the money? It doesn't make any sense. Well, they're, they are smart because they found something in Japan. In Japan, in the 1980s, there was a quality control problem with cars. No one here probably remembers, but Japanese cars were terrible, they didn't work well, they're unreliable. But the, the Japanese uh, developed this method called lean, which you can kind of see in my sticky note, which just drifted off. And lean is characterized by this idea of continuous feedback where you build something and then you, you get it out into the market as quickly as possible and you learn from your market and then you improve. And there's a bunch of other things that they use to make it more you know, sophisticated for manufacturing. But in start, the startup world, it's accelerated to this amazing pace where you, you put software out one day, someone uses it the next day, they provide, you get feedback from that person, you get all the data and you make it better. And that's how startups have managed to grow so quickly. And in fact, the biggest benefit of this has been, oh, it's still sexist, I'm sorry, it's startup culture. Anyway, the big benefit has been that it's reduced waste, right? So there's less waste because there's, it's more in tune with the market. The, the, the startup is, is just is making what people want, not what they don't, even if it's for free and they're getting all that funding. So what does that lead to? Of course, it leads to the hockey stick of growth. I don't know if you've ever heard that expression, but among startups, they always refer to hockey, even in America, which is quite funny. And then I don't know why there's a little minion on a rocket ship, but it was in the clip art. 
generally speaking, the hockey stick turns into a rocket ship, um, and that's what the you know venture capitalist is really looking for. That rocket ship after the hockey stick. It's kind of it's a mixed analogies, but it works. Anyway, how did these people? How did these people learn? How do these stupid people, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't say that. I actually, I work among some really nice people, but how do the stupid ones, because there are a lot of stupid ones, and how do these, these racists, these rapists, how do they get successful? Well, you know, just like that little piggy bank being swaddled by um, uh, uh, inanimate hands, they've developed something similar called an accelerator in the startup world. An accelerator is like, it's this place where you get funding, not that much, but just enough. You get mentorship, you get support, and, and you join these things called accelerators, and, you're, and your company grows, and you learn from your peers. It sounds really amazing, right? It sounds like something that, as an artist, I would like. But more often than not, as an artist, I'm kind of like this. I'm just, I'm, a, I'm out in the cold. I'm trying to learn however I can, and really there's very little feedback, certainly not very much money coming my way, and so it feels very lonely. However, I don't think it has to be this way because we know that artists are more like this. They're really empathetic. They're just wonderful human beings. I've, everyone I've met here in the audience, they're people that I would bring home to my parents. They're people that I'd invent, yeah, I'd, I'd invite them to my wedding. It would just be, we would have such a good time together and we do and that's why, that's why we continue to indulge in our poverty. So, but only, but if only hugs could scale. They can't, there's no hockey stick of hugs. There's no rocket ship of hugs. But what if there was? So, what if we took the best of both worlds? What if we took all of the technology and you know, methodology from the startup world and mixed that with the generosity and empathy, I'm not sure which is which the unicorn, anyway the empathy of the artist. What would result then? What world would we live in? What would culture look like? So I asked myself that question and I came up with an answer. I started an accelerator for artists that I call Lean Artist and I'm training artists around the world on startup methodology so that they can become rocket ships of growth. And so far I've worked with 10 artists and we've produced 10 companies uh, as artworks. Here's a list of them. You can see that they have names like startups like Flyant, XE, Got Got Need. It sounds just like something I'd want to fund. And we're seeking funding and going through all the stages of a regular accelerator right now as we speak. One of them, here's one example, CCCT. They're inventing things that you wouldn't see in startup culture. So CCT is like this, it's creative commons for labor exchange, for volunteers. Um, now that one might not make money, but what if it did? What if volunteers made money? That would be pretty cool. Aurora, this is a really fancy one. This is a startup that, um, that the young woman Yanans founded, and what it is is it's jewelry, it's wearables, wearables that um, automatically detects and reports sexual harassment. La di da, that way I can be fashionable and responsible as a woman as I'm being uh, harassed. It's wonderful. <laughs> so, what next? Money, right? We're here, we're talking about the art market. Jeremy, you're saying, ah, I already have a business. It's called me, I'm an artist. You know, I'm a painter. 80%, as we heard earlier today, of the art market is painting. And I've made digital paintings my whole career. Now, I haven't been very successful at selling them. I'm gonna just, it's a moment of weakness here. Um, I make very little money from, uh, from my digital paintings. In fact, most of my money comes from uh, just talking about it, really. <laughs> Mostly from speaking to me. So it's, it's always, it's, I, I'm, you know, I have the gift of gab, but I don't have any way of converting that into successful artwork. So I thought to myself, Jeremy, what if you borrowed some of these ideas you're teaching others and applied it to painting? And the answer is something I'm calling Lean Artist Pro. And it's a it's painting application, which I'm going to show you now. Um, but it's also it's built on these methodologies, this idea of building, measuring, and learning. It's built on in continuous feedback. And there's this idea in the startup world: if you can make that loop really, really small, the fat, the, the, they call it batch size. The smaller you can get the batch size, the more efficient you can become, and the better a product you can produce. So let me just show you the how the painting app works, just as a painting application. Because of course, if you're going to be painting. You, you, want it, you want it to be better than, than old painting. Of course, digital it, painting is always going to be better. There's less waste in material, right? Because it's, it's digital. Look, here's how it works. Look, I just reach out and I can paint um, with my hand. 
and, and this, connect, this 3D uh, camera detects it, and it's, it's very gestural, which is what you're looking for, and right? The art market's looking for that. I can change the color quickly on my remote, add some green, maybe make it a little darker. That's kind of ugly, actually, but hang on. We can do, we can do something better than that. Anyway, we just, you know, we just tickle, we're just tickling a, a virtual canvas. And as you can see, there we go. Now, that's all well and good. Hang on, let's just brighten it up a bit. That, that's nicer. People like pink, kind of flowery stuff. So, as you can see, there's some numbers on screen as well. It says $10, and there's a countdown. Well, that's one part. There's another thing that I haven't shown you yet, which is the feedback part. So you have to learn, right? The artist wants to learn, and we want to learn as quickly as possible. So I've created a website, um, which I'll, I'll get, give you the address to in a second, but I'm just, um, I'm just going to go there first to start. And on this website, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's the artwork, and there's a little place here for collector feedback. So if you're a collector, you can arrive on this website, you can see what I've just painted, and then you can type in some feedback. I'm going to type in some feedback right now. I'm going to say, great job, uh, but, mm, and I don't know, you know, I'm not ready for the sale. Okay, so we just heard a sound, and so now I'm in my studio, I'm getting this feedback, because you know, the collector's just checking in on their phone, and, and, and they're like, well, I'm not really ready to buy. You know, maybe more pink or something, you know? Maybe, or maybe, maybe blue, right? So they just type in maybe blue, I get the message, I'm ready for blue, let's put, we're gonna add some blue here, and, and, then, and, then, and then that's it. Oh, I'm going in the wrong direction, I should have made this. The, the palette has too much, there's too much uh, resolution of color. Anyway, there we go. So now it's blue, I've added blue, and now they're ready to make a sale. And guess what? In real time, they can click buy now right here and buy it right on the website. Now, when they do that, and it's gonna cost me $10, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead with it. Uh, so I'm just gonna click buy now, and we're gonna do this in real time, and then I'm gonna ask you to do it. <laughs> Well, you know what, I'm just, okay, I'm gonna, I don't wanna spend the $10, but you're gonna spend the $10 in a moment. <laughs> but when you do, when an order does come in, just so I know that, because I'm gonna be policing you guys, when an order comes in, there's gonna be, yeah, some confetti's gonna come up in the air, and we're gonna hear a great air horn sound. That's how we know we're successful. Okay, so, um, without further ado, actually, I'm gonna tell you how, how we're gonna, this is how the rest of this is gonna go, actually. So kind of my show is gonna become collaborative at this point. Um, First of all, I need you to get on this Wi-Fi network. And the password is architecture. Um, and I, I've just limited it to this Wi-Fi network for today. In the future, of course, you could just be, of course, doing your shopping at a luxury goods store or whatever, maybe uh, firing your staff at home. And uh, for you know, your cleaning staff, they just didn't do a good job. But anyway, just type in, if you can get on your phones, I'm not sure, I've never tried it at this scale. I'm not sure if it's gonna, if it's all, all gonna work if we all go at once. Now, the mechanics of this are quite interesting while you're doing that. While, um, when you provide feedback, you'll notice that the price goes down. So right now it's quite cheap, $11. But I believe feedback is valuable. So in exchange for every piece of feedback I get over the next few minutes, the price will go down by a dollar. Subsequently, the longer I spend on stage, because my time is money, um, the higher the price will go. So right now, uh, it's at the $11, but you can see that countdown clock says 31 seconds. When it gets to zero, um, the price will go up by a dollar. Now, it could go up by more dollars if I just go like this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm nice, uh, so just provide some feedback, and if you were to provide 21 pieces of feedback, that would be worth a free painting for all of you. Now, anyone that does buy a painting today, they will get that painting uh, in the mail, and it's uh, a real thing. I'll really print it on a real canvas, and it'll be, yeah, for real. And you'll be part of history, because it'll be the first time ever that an artwork has been created and sold within one minute, or the same minute. Um, so, without further ado, you need to know where to go online. So you want to go to leanartistpro.com, and uh, if you go to leanartistpro.com, you'll be redirected to this website, and then uh, we're in business, basically. And um, yeah, so at this point, I have no idea what to do because I'm just a helpless artist um, who, you know, just it's just painting. I'm just painting at random in my studio, and I have I have no idea if I'm painting the right thing because I haven't I haven't spoken to the market. The market hasn't told me anything about what I should be painting. Uh, all, oh, oh, okay. Well, then if you love it, buy it. <laughs> Uh, that's what I would say, but uh, I'll just get, if you love it, maybe it's because you like blue. I don't know. I might need more detail about what to do. Draw a cow head. Oh, dear. Okay, so cows are, 
uh, pink, maybe, in my world, <laughs> and a head of a cow. Is this a cow? That's a cow head, kind of. Uh, it needs a, if it's just a head, there we go. It's just a, uh, maybe an eye. Hang on, an eye. I can do an eye in the middle of that. <laughs> there we go. That's my interpretation of that. Batter cow. Oh, <laughs> okay. So let's just, uh, this is quite uh, humiliating, but here we go. <laughs> there we go. It's a fatter cow. Wonderful. And the price is already down to $19. Of course, we still haven't made a sale, so I know it's not quite right for the, you know, the collector that just has that, ooh, I like that, that my cows to be green, actually. Um, any other feedback? I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to add some dots to the cow. Oh, Kincaid, like, oh dear. Kincaid, Thomas Kincaid, such a realist, and yet I've chosen what I consider to be more green on the right. Yes, that's the type of instruction I'm looking for. Okay, so let's get into the greens here. Let's put a little green on the right. There we go. Oh yeah, there we go, green on the right. Perfect, oh, beautiful. This just, oh, wonderful. Oh, more, yes, 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 I love it. $17, come on, I mean, I'm gonna tell you this right now, oh, less. Oh, I don't know how to react to that. Uh, what I could do is just put it a little darker. This is, this is a landscape, actually. It's become a landscape. Um, and no, I didn't tell you is that the cost of these paintings is about $50 <laughs> for me to produce. So if someone were to buy it right now, I'd be, of course, losing money. Um, erase. Oh, OK, I can erase. Uh, let's just uh, paint some white. Uh, this is gesso. Uh, there we go. Yes, yes. I feel like I'm in the or minority report. Really, it's like. All white, just a white paint, very modernist. Oh, there's a screensaver that we didn't want to see. Uh, all white, there we go. There we go. Please write some more. Oh dear, okay, some words. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, what color words, first of all, is the question. I know I'm getting... Okay, let's do, let's try saying like, the simplest word I know. Uh, let's do this. Uh... <laughs> it's very precise, very precise. There we go. You know, uh, oh, oh, yes, ha, that's what it is. It says ha, yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for helping me out. Um, yeah, that's my favorite word. Uh, I love to laugh. Anyway, uh, if there's no more instruction, I mean, really, how about if, um, if I lent my credit card? <laughs> Sutherland, Sutherland sign points. Sutherland sign, I'm not, I, this might be over my head, this, uh, this reference. Provide additional instruction, please. <laughs> Hang on, it's actually pretty good looking at this point. I liked it when we went white. Um, I don't know how much longer. I know you guys are just trying to get it down to, to zero though. Uh, <laughs> you're kind of just like uh, confusing me at this point because the price is all time low but, uh, with face. Oh, pay oh, okay, I can, I can do that. <laughs> See, look at that realistic paint. I don't. I bet you didn't notice that at first. How it's like it, it settles into the canvas. It gives you that that impression of physicality. Yes. Oh, that was a, it. Received the message, but it didn't go through. Sometimes it could be a little bit glitchy. I apologize about that. So if I got an instruction that wasn't quite right. Now come on, seven dollars, seven dollars, people. I feel like I'm. It's a telethon on PBS or something. Come on, let's get on, get on your phones and hit buy now. Who cannot afford seven dollars in this audience? You probably bought a coffee this morning in this ridiculous city, and it cost you eight dollars. Seven dollars for what? For a historic moment, surely you can buy it. Come on. I'm gonna check my phone. Maybe there was an error. Maybe it didn't come through. Less purple. No. Okay, fine. You said you'll buy? Okay, less purple and you'll buy. Deal. You've got a deal. Watch out, because here it comes. Less purple in the form of, of white, and then I'm gonna add the opposite of purple, which is yellow, and, and then we'll really... That, oh, that's not... There we go. Then, now, you... Oh, look, it's a fire. Come on. It's hot. You want it. You really do. Look, it's so exciting. It's my face. There you go, look at that. Come on. Six, yay! So what, we made it, we did it, we made history. You guys are amazing. Now look at that. Who says there's no art market? Who says digital art can't sell? I just showed you digital art can sell and it sells very painfully at a loss. But anyway, thank you so much. I'm Jeremy Bailey, I'm here for the rest of the hour and I can take your questions or whatever, but Stay tuned, St uh, Lean Artist Pro. That's it. Thank you so much. Bye.
there's supposed to be now an awkward transition to questions. <laughs> so if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Most of the time, people just have technical questions. How did you do that? You're so amazing. But I don't know if that's going to be the case. Any questions? <laughs> well, I think I got a lot of answers today. So I know a lot more about what makes great art. I have a question. OK. I would like to know who bought the, the artwork. If, is sorry. If a person from the public uh, wants to say the one who, <laughs> woo! Congratulations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, there we I'm go. I'm jealous that you have time <laughs> to enter my. Okay. <laughs> of course, I, artists always lose in the secondary market, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a product for that next, I guess. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the sale. <laughs> Oh, then you actually will get the artwork at $19. I did. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there could have been multiple sales, but I guess that's hopeful, wishful thinking. There was a point at which, I, when I was programming it, I wasn't sure, like, should I rate limit the number of sales? And of course, I was, I was proven correct that that could never happen. Uh, anyway, I know credit cards are the problem. It's just too many steps. <laughs> Any other questions? Ah, good to know. Okay, Shopify. <laughs> well, well, thanks again. I'll be in the audience and hanging out, and I know a lot of you are friends, so um, it, it's, it's great to have you here, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you.